Well, I, uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise today uh, and want to thank my friend and colleague, uh, New Jersey. Nobody has fought long longer or harder uh, for the cause of life uh, than this man. And uh, I'm pleased to be up here uh, because I know we both believe that we represent and rise on behalf of the hundreds of thousands of Americans who are going to come to Washington, D.C. in March uh, here uh, this coming Friday because we believe that giving even one more life, one more person the right to change the world is worth it. Well, for the last six years, I've come to the well of the House with my friend from New Jersey and my colleagues on the bipartisan pro-life caucus to celebrate life and fight for the unborn. On the seventh occasion, I rise with a renewed sense of hope and optimism for our children's future. I commend President Trump for making one of his very first actions protecting unborn children around the world by preventing U.S. taxpayer dollars being used for foreign aid uh, from being used to fund groups that promote abortion under the guise of family planning. We can't stop here, however. That's just one step. Now is the time for action. When President Bush restored these protections in 2001, he wrote, quote, it is my conviction that taxpayer funds should not be used to pay for abortions or advocate uh, or actively promote abortion either here or abroad, end quote. While we took uh, step two earlier today, when a bipartisan majority of us here in the House voted to extend the Hyde Amendment across all government programs and to ensure that no tax dollars from hardworking Americans are used to fund abortions here in the United States. Let's take additional steps to fight for the ones who don't have a voice. This Congress should protect unborn children from the violence of late-term abortion, protect medical professionals from being coerced to participate in abortions, and protect women from an industry that has put its financial interests first above women's health. Mr. Speaker, the government does not give us our rights. No, in fact, the government exists to protect our God-given rights that were given to us by our Creator and to protect the next generation. Just all you have to do is look at those original founding documents and it's easy to see. Well, we are here tonight for the same reason, that hundreds of thousands will march on Washington this Friday and to fight for the rights of that next generation. And I'm pleased and proud to be able to be a part of that. And I thank my friend from New Jersey for leading this and I yield back. I